Hey everybody, welcome back. Monday morning briefing episode number 73. It's July the 1st, 2022. We missed last week's episode. We've just been focused on the saddles, uh, trying to get those moved forward. We're trying to get some of those caught up and, and get those out of here while we've got the trees here and everything's ready to go. So I've really kind of been focused on that and some other projects that we've had going in the custom shop. And so that's kind of taken me away a little bit. We are currently still waiting on our leather shipment. You know, the tannery's working at full capacity. They're doing a great job. The product we've been getting from them is really good. If you've bought some material packs. Um, hopefully you've you've seen that on how good the leather's been here lately, um, but it is taking them longer. Just the nature of the beast. It's the way everything is right now. Everything's a little slower um, and with, you know, just kind of the nature of where we're at economy wise. But our shipment, I think shipped earlier this week. So I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be here today because it is Friday uh, when we're filming this video. So I'm hoping it'll get here today. If it does, we're going to get to cutting. I've had a lot of emails asking about the belt material packs and the guitar straps. We did cut a bunch of guitar strap material packs and if you were on the newsletter then you received a newsletter and we're notified on that like we've talked about before you need to be a part of the newsletter because that's where I send stuff out first and if they sell out there's really no reason for me to put them um, on the website completely or uh, advertise them on social media so we just uh, kept those off until we get more leather in so we can get some on the website but we do have leather coming um, we're kind of at the point where we're gonna be probably increasing our leather shipments just to kind of cover this gap that's coming uh, because the lead times are longer now and uh, they have been and they probably will be um, kind of going forward or we just want to at least shore up and protect against that so that we're not out of stock on everything we really appreciate everybody buying the material packs and it seems like y'all really enjoying those um, but it is kind of Sometimes it's kind of frustrating because I want to keep stuff in stock so that you can get it anytime you need it. Um, and I apologize for not being able to do that, but we're just kind of still trying to figure out how much leather do we need to buy. And that's a good question that you've probably got to ask yourself a lot of times in the shop. How much leather do you need? Do you need one side to build a pair of leggings or do you need two? Um, most of the time I'll err on the side of order more than you think because if you mess something up, you're going to be down another week or two getting more material in. But um, you also got to look at your budget. You've got to look at where you're at uh, in the shop, your storage capacity. All of those things kind of come into effect. And especially with us, with this, how many sides that we're buying, um, if we were to double our shipment that we're getting now, it would be a really it would really be a big issue trying to figure out where we're going to put it all while we're waiting to cut it. Um, and so that's just kind of some of the stuff that's going on in the shop and kind of things we're trying to figure out. Um, we've had two uh, project videos come out in the last month or so, the, the kidney bean purse and the guitar strap. We really appreciate everybody, uh, the reaction we've gotten to those videos and the pattern packs. Um, and in fact, the uh, guitar strap is almost sold out. Don't worry, you can order it um, on back order, but I've already put in another order for another printing. So hopefully we won't actually go into the back order. Hopefully those will get here. They're pretty quick. So we should have those by Monday, I would think at the latest. Um, and some other things that I'm working on I went ahead and made a new pattern for a pancake knife sheath that's for a larger knife. I've had a few requests for that and I had one already, but it wasn't it wasn't updated. It was kind of older and I just kind of made it work anytime I needed to build one for like a larger knife, like this bit large sodbuster here, um, or an I brand knife, which is a knife that a lot of cowboys like to carry. Uh, very good knife, would love to get those knives in the store and we might at some point, but those larger knives are pretty popular. And so I went ahead and made a new pattern I made one just to make sure that everything fit nice um, and everything. And then we went ahead and set that off to Texas Custom Dies. So they're making us a new die for this. So as soon as that gets here, we'll uh, let y'all know. And again, through the newsletter for sure. But also on social media, we will start offering material packs for the larger pancake knife sheaths. But I probably won't do a video for that just because it's exactly the same as the pancake knife sheath video that we've already done. But I might do a pattern pack for that uh, just so that you can have some new tool patterns because it is the tooling window is a little larger. And so we might go ahead and do another, another pattern pack for that as well. We just want to kind of let you know on that. But like I said, on the guitar straps, the gun slings, we have dies for all those. We do have dies for the kidney bean purse. I haven't cut any of those out and put those on the cut bench page yet, but I hope to do that uh, maybe this week. Like I said, my main focus has really been on trying to get these saddles where they need to be and uh, trying to stay kind of caught up on that and working that. That's always a deal in the shop. You've got to kind of bounce around and, you know, between everything that we're doing, the podcast and then the content for you guys and things and some other videos that we're working on for y'all as well and trying to find time to edit it and things it can kind of be a lot so sometimes i've got to turn it off stay at the bench and work on a project 
But speaking about the podcast, I think we've had two episodes since the last time we talked, and the first one that came out uh, a couple of weeks ago was with Chaz Weldon, and uh, that was a really cool interview. He's been around a long time. He knows almost everybody in the industry probably, does some beautiful work. If you haven't uh, found him on Instagram, I don't believe he's got a website anymore um, or anything like that. He pretty much just works on his on his list that he has and, uh, and goes from there, but his work is, is really cool, and that episode was really neat to uh, get to talk to him and hear some of his stories and stuff. And uh, we really enjoyed that. And yesterday's episode that came out was with Nevada Watt, and she's the daughter of Jeremiah Watt. If you haven't listened to that episode, go back and listen to his episode um, just to kind of get a feel for the kind of guy he is. He's pretty funny. Uh, uh, he's a character, and I really enjoyed listening to him and kind of hearing his stories. He's kind of been all over. He's been around a long time as well. He's got just a wealth of knowledge. Uh, you could probably spend a whole day with that guy and not absorb a tenth of what he knows. And uh, it was just a really, really cool episode and a great opportunity to be able to sit down and kind of visit with him. And same with his daughter talking to her. She lives in southeastern Oregon up there with her husband on a family ranch that uh, that he has. And uh, they just ranch and she does jewelry and silversmithing. And it was really neat. And she's doing some big things. She created a new website called Be A Maker School. And she's got a bunch of different craftsmen that she's working on getting on there. She's got a few on there already that are doing online coursework, kind of like we do in the academy. Hers is set up a little different and it's more of like a subscription type model and um, I'm eager to see how well that works. I think it's a great idea. Um, just kind of a little bit different than the way we do it. And uh, But I like that she has a bunch of different instructors coming on so she's got a lot of variation in the coursework. She's, if you want to learn braiding or saddle making or silversmithing um, she's got a lot of different things on there. I think that thing's going to go pretty far. I think it's going to be a really good deal. It's already getting a lot of good feedback from what she told us on the podcast. So we really enjoyed just kind of seeing where her mind was at on that and kind of Watching somebody do something similar to what we do in a different way is always interesting because you can both learn from each other. So we really enjoyed that interview. If you haven't had an opportunity to check that out, be sure and uh, check it out on Apple or Spotify, or you can just go to dgsaddlery.com and click on the podcast and you can listen to all of them. But as far as other little projects working on the shop, these days we're trying to keep down just a little bit of the custom stuff to some extent just because of all the other things that we're doing on the DG Leathercraft side of things that takes up so much more of my time. So my books aren't open as much as they used to be, but I do take custom orders here and there as I can fill them in as long as people aren't in a big hurry. And I've got a cool one in that came in this week and uh, I had a local guy, he's actually a coach at the school, a friend of ours, and uh, he tanned a bunch of rattlesnake skins and has a bunch more he said that he does. And uh, he brought these to me and we're doing a guitar strap with these and uh, I think it's gonna be pretty cool. If you've never worked with snake skin, it's can be kind of creepy, I guess, if you're not into snakes. Um, I'm not really a lover of snakes particularly, but uh, as long as they're not near me, I'm fine. But these things are, it's a different type of material. They're really cool to work with. Um, they, they turn out really neat on a project. The only thing is that they're really thin, so you have to kind of be tender with them and kind of just Play it by ear. I find the inlaying snake skin is way better than using it as an overlay, just because of uh, the how fragile it is. You don't want to. I don't want that stuff where I don't want any snake skin where there's any holes for a buckle or anything like that. So I try to eat, always, if I can, I try to inlay that stuff. That'd be one ad advice I would have. One piece of advice that I would have on that. Um, and then as far as a lot of times on snake skins, these guys are tanning them themselves. And when it comes to tanning snake skins, I don't know much about it. I know there's a bunch of different little home remedies and they're pretty easy to do, but sometimes they'll come to you and they're still, they still feel kind of wet. And again, if you don't like snakes, it can kind of be creepy, but they're still kind of damp and just kind of not greasy so much, but just kind of damp and cold. Um, and it's, Sometimes the glue doesn't stick real well. So what I found is when I pick one of these, cause we're only gonna use one of these, he just brought me four of them to kind of pick and choose which one I want to use. I'll take this snake skin and I'll lay it out on the bench and I'll let it kind of dry in the air because with it being rolled up here, there's probably some moisture, very little like humidity moisture in here. And so I want to be sure that it's as dry as I possibly can get it. And then 
we'll go to kind of laying out where we're going to put it and, and then and then kind of glue, glue it up and and everything else the last one i did worked out good i did a belt for another guy here locally again we're in south texas depending on where you are in the united states these snakes may be very common rattle bugs may be very common where you live they are um kind of west of here a little bit they're not really common here and where we live um at all but you go just a little bit west and people uh, kill them all the time but they're uh they're pretty prevalent in south texas and so so I grew up with, you know, people wanting you to work with rattlesnake skins quite a bit, and everybody has them. They do stuff with them. They don't do a board, whatever, and they're really neat. I especially like the ones with the big rattles on here. Um, those those buttons are are really cool. And uh, unfortunately, I don't think they will be able to use it on the guitar strap unless I come up with a neat idea of a way to to kind of attach that on there. That might be kind of fun. But anyway, that's something that we're going to try to try to maybe piddle on this weekend. It's not really a priority for us in the shop this type of project because it's the pattern he wants isn't something that we do. It's not our normal guitar strap and that kind of thing. But it's kind of one of those deals where we're just taking care of a local customer. We'll try to help him out and fix something up for him. So I try to do those on the weekend and in my off time try to try to just piddle on those and have fun with them and uh, see how they come out. Monday's July 4th. Not sure if we'll be in the shop or not. I probably will be at some point, but not sure if we'll be open um, all day or not. But hopefully you're getting a three-day weekend. You can kind of relax a little bit, enjoy the July 4th weekend, and get ready for Waco if you're going to Waco in August. We did send in our booth stuff for the Waco show, so our booth space will be near Maker's Leather Supply again. It will be a larger booth. We went ahead and got a double-sized booth this year just so that we have more room to walk around. I'm probably going to be bringing more product than I did last year, but mainly just so there's more room in there because it got kind of tight when you do a 10 foot booth space you don't really have a, a lot of uh, a lot of flow through that booth people get in there and they get crammed up when they want to leave there's somebody coming in it's hard to get around so I went ahead and got a bigger one just to make it a little bit more comfortable but we're getting excited about the Waco show it's August the 12th to the 14th we hope to see you there um, you can certainly get online and search Heart of Texas Leather Show and you'll find all the information about it like I said they're going to have a ton of classes the classes will start on Tuesday there's a lot of great instructors all week long going to be teaching classes there and things so get on there look look at those classes and see if there's something that may interest you that you'd like to make the drive for and go up there and, and go through that class um, like I said I think I think our classes may be full but there's a ton of other classes going on all that week and if you get an opportunity to come to Waco for the show I think you'll really enjoy it there's gonna be a lot going on there it's supposed to be bigger than it was last year so there'll be a lot of stuff to uh, check out and research and meet people and I'd love the opportunity to meet you as well so we'll be there we're looking forward to it I'm gonna go ahead and get off here I'm gonna get back to work hopefully our leather shipment will get here when it gets here i will post something on instagram to let everybody know that we did finally get the leather shipment and then i will get to cutting this weekend so we can get some stuff back on the website i appreciate you guys so much and we'll see you all next week in the monday morning briefing